DC Multiverse! Well, good day, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Brad, the DC Universe Geek. Today, won't you have a look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Shazam Fury of the Gods Shaz Captain Shazam Marvel action figure? <laughs> Black box. Shazam logo on the bottom. Fury of the Gods. And would you look at this fantastic little piece of artwork? So, not bad packaging, nothing out of the ordinary. Everything is as it should be and as expected. Let's get this guy out of the box, though. Down in the comments, let me know if you're excited for the Shazam Fury of the Gods movie. Are you going to see it or are you going to pass on it? I think most of us are probably going to go. I'm going to try and stand this up. Let's do it old school. And here's what you get. You get the figure, the trading card, the action figure base, some Sith lightning, two hands for doing Sith fingers, and two fists. As you can see, the figure comes with one fist and one Sith fingers hand installed. The actual figure here itself looks friggin' great. Although not an exact match for the movie, it does a great job of hitting all of the key points from Shazam's suit in the film. And as we can see, it is very different than the previous Shazam suit. Well, just look at these two Shazam figures side by side. Even though I didn't think that the old suit was too bad, I definitely think that this one has made some improvements. The chest lightning bolt and the medallions that hold his now hoodless cape on have been done very well. As for the gauntlets, which, as far as McFarlane's sculpted detail, look pretty good. They look pretty film accurate for what I can tell here. I will say I do kind of appreciate the older ones better from the first movie. And the same for the boots, I do prefer the older costumes boots in comparison to this one's. And you should also be able to notice that this figure's missing some key red points that are in his boot area. In comparison to the actual film boots, these are lacking those red areas. Not that I'm complaining, I don't like them. So, I feel like Todd's done us a service. The face sculpt, paint job, and hair sculpt all look really fantastic with this figure. I did order two of these. The previous one looks, well, like this. The eyes aren't stamped on correctly, but this one looks fantastic, and it's almost like they're using Marvel's technology where they scan the person's face in and create the figure's head sculpt that way. I also very much like the texture all over this suit. I feel like... That's definitely a step in the right direction in comparison to the old suit's texture. And you've also got like a darker red down the legs and down the side here, which is movie accurate. The cape on this guy is softer than I thought it was going to be when I saw the promo images. And it is nice that it's basically just a nice neutral cape. I'm not a big fan of when Todd has capes designed that kind of go off to the side like that. Like, look at this Eradicator cape. What are we gonna do with that? Now let's just do a few quick comparisons. Here is Billy Batson Shazam here, compared to the comic book version of Shazam. I really wish that the comic book version was as nice, deep, vibrant red as this figure. And here he is compared to three different Shazam figures from the first movie. The Mattel Kid version, and the Mattel DC Multiverse, and also the Mafex. Clearly, and this should come as no surprise, we knew that this one was going to be the biggest and the tallest and look the most different. And now on to arguably the most important segment of the video for a lot of you, and that is the articulation, the posability segment of this figure. It's going to be important because he's a flight character, so you're going to primarily want to get him into flight poses. So the head mixed with the torso and the waist automatically make for enough articulation that you can get him into a convincing enough flight pose that way. The torso is on a ball joint, so not only can he bend back quite far, but really all around quite well. Although as usual, even though the front has definitely more torso articulation in the forward direction than a lot of McFarland figures, some people would still find this to be a lacking amount of forward articulation. The waist and the torso, though, they both spin around 360. We have that socket right here in the shoulder. And you'll note that this one goes all the way to the medallion. This goes really far in, which actually means you get a little bit more articulation than with a lot of the McFarlane figures. Quite often, you end up with something more like this. So it does definitely cover up the articulation point there, but it certainly doesn't go in quite as far. He's gonna get into a reasonable T-pose, and then all the way around, you got your bicep, it's gonna swivel 360, double-jointed elbows that crunch up, 
As good as, I don't know, I think that's good enough. What do you think? That seems like a fair amount. We have the wrists that have that rounded hinge, except for it's also sculpted to look kind of like the suit that he's wearing, so it hides that ugly rounded ball joint. Todd's doing a fantastic job of imp implementing this kind of thing with his new figures. And of course, you can see how big that hinge is, so it's obvious you're gonna get a lot of articulation from it. Down here, that's what he's got, the usual McFarlane clickety-clack groin like that. And it's actually, as usual, pretty well articulated. Up is one that a lot of people you know, they're concerned about, especially with a flight figure, how far up can the legs go? And that's good enough for me. I mean, I'm going to be honest here. I have a hard time lifting my leg up higher than that as well in real life. <laughs> I'm not a superhero, so I know that nothing more than what I can do is expected, but I don't know. I'm okay with that. You've got your double jointed knees like that. Your ankles that follow suit with the wrists, they're a rounded hinge, but they're camouflaged to look like the boots. And of course they have a pivot right here. Uh, it's not going to turn because it's really tight. Let's try the other one. It will have a pivot because they all have a pivot, but let's... Oh, oh there it goes. Did you hear that? It clicked. Oh. And then you've got, obviously, your ankle up and down and your toe. Oh, did you hear that? That click? That's the first time this toe has been opened. So now what do I think about this Shazam figure? Well, I darn near love it, and I think it's pretty much perfect for the price range. Let's face it, for this price range, to get a figure this big, with this much facial detail, a pretty good amount of articulation, all brand new sculpting, mind you, I think that this is an out-of-the-park home run. I tell you, if I was Zack and I dressed up in the suit and I was going to make some sort of a charitable promotion in a sick kid's hospital and I needed a bunch of figures of myself in the suit to give away to the kids as part of, like, you know, a gift backpack filled with stuff, this would be the one that I would go for. Anyway, super friends, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for tuning in and hearing my thoughts, ideas, observations, and opinions about the McFarland Toys Shazam Fury of the Gods Shazam action figure. I'll see you next time with the next one. Have a DC day, everybody, and take care.